All right, we have results from the gas kiln. Our first firing, beautifully done by Eric and Mark. Thank you very much. We're working with Coleman porcelain and underglazes like black, Amoco black, lead one underglaze. A slip, a few slips. For glazes, it's pretty much just chino. Words, chino. Now, one of my students was pining for the five gallon bucket of water and soda ash that we used to dip our sculptures into back when we had full access to the studio at Seward Park Clay Studio. So I suggested just to go ahead and use Shino. And you can see from this recipe that Shino has a good amount of soda ash. 8.04% soda ash in Wurtz Carbon Trap Shino, which is what we use this time around. And then if we look at Davis Trap Shino, it has even more soda ash in it. Here is a cup made out of porcelain with the uh, Wurtz soda ash glaze on the inside. Because of the pandemic, we only have a small amount of glaze, say a half a cup at a time, that we are to brush on the pieces, uh, which is a little difficult for what I like to do in my sculptures. So let me show you what I came up with, uh, with the Chino glaze and my work. This one. So what I did for this one, I took my word chino and I thinned it down so I had enough and I actually poured it to the top like a chino latte or something. And then I poured it out and I poured it again and I poured it out. Um, and in the end, I put some down inside and it's crystallized. It must be pure soda ash. It's kind of uh, crackled. So we've got one glaze that gives you a lovely sheen and some blushing on the outside. It gives you crackling and crawling and even crystals on the inside. That's pretty versatile. And here's a photo of the bottom of the cup where I left a puddle of watered down soda ash as well. So you can really see the crackling. On to the next piece. Building this piece, I built it on a donut of porcelain that you see fired there. Then that's what I used to support it in the firing with some kiln wadding as well. When it was green, I put a lot of copper green slip on the inside and you can see that the is kind of pink in there and then it goes sort of black and blue up up above um, and it gives some nice dark lines inside on top of the insects back so I think that was a nice effect copper green low fire slip and that pink comes from copper in reduction then uh, when it was bisque I took my thinned out chino and I poured it inside this honeycomb all the way through the top down into the bottom till it ran out the bottom hole of the piece. So, and I did that a number of times. Now here on the side of this piece, down at the bottom left there, you see that kind of um, sunset glow. That's the soda ash coming through. The flux in the glaze causes um, your dark lines, as you see here, they kind of glassy and they come like glazes and they spread out and so sometimes I have to take a stone, a sharpening stone and grind away. I did there on the right eye. Grind away and open it up again so that you can see the the lines which disappear because the flux comes out and it sort of spreads the black underglaze out almost like a glaze. Fuming sort of. So now for a change of pace Remember, we used low fire black slip. And here it is on the tar paper piece, a fast three part faster piece, three sided. This is it 
thinned down and brushed on. I think it's pretty. I like it. Then here it is in the inlay where it's much thicker and it's bubbling and blistering and boiling. Um, and on this side, brushed and cut through and a little bit thicker, it's, I like it. But it's maybe not the best thing to use to do inlay. Um, yeah, there you go. Because the inlay gets kind of bloated and unclear. It's not as crisp and sharp as it could be. Yeah, there you go. So that's low fire black slip. It has manganese and black iron and uh, red clay. It has some nice qualities. Now let's take a look at another demo piece. This one um, has inlay on this side. It's got celadon on the inside. You can see that it's the low fire black slip and it's bubbling up and kind of foaming out. Um, crazy. This is definitely not something you'd want on the inside of your coffee cup. Here it's foaming and boiling up out of my cut lines. Um, impressive. It's kind of pretty because you have the contrast between the bubbly black and the slip, sleek porcelain. So now we've covered the Shino experiments on the porcelain and this is the experiment with low fire black slip on porcelain. So let's say you're not in the mood for bubbling and boiling and fuming and fluxing and spreading out. You might want to use Lug One Amoco Black Underglaze if all you want is just a really nice black line. That's what you'll get uh, with that underglaze on porcelain. All right, that was a lot to cover. We've got one more thing, wax inlay. But first, let's let Kathleen reminisce about the changing colors of Amoco Lug One Underglaze. I wanted to show you something here. You notice, I think right here is where you see it best. This is Lug One Amoco Underglaze circa 19... 1990, I mean, it's old. See how green it is? I mean, I like the color, it's very green. On this side, nothing fancy, just the usual um, inscribing to the clay, like scrapito, really. And then remember we did wax. And here you have it. Let me see if you can see that. I first took colors of wax and painted with wax, which you can see. Yeah. And then. <coughs> And then I covered the whole thing with wax. And I drew the line, cut line through. And that's what makes the little black lines. And then I put some color, some very pale color that burned out in the firing. And she needs some black lipstick. Um, so there's more work to be done on this. But I think I won't fire her again. Maybe we should tackle cold finish together. Or perhaps low fire finishes on a high fire piece. This piece actually is cone six. All right, everyone, it's been a pleasure, and goodbye. <laughs>